first and foremost, I wanted to wish everyone a very happy new year. And for the first video in the new year, we are doing none other than a thrift store challenge. And if you're new to this series, basically we go to the high-end stores to get loads of inspiration. And then we go to the thrift store to see what we can come up with for a whole lot less. With that being said, let's go ahead and get started. If you are someone who really loves McGee and Co and the Threshold by Studio McGee line, one thing you should definitely keep your eyes out at the thrift store for are neutral ceramics so that way you can add that kind of faux foliage yourself at a much more affordable price point. However, sometimes you can get really lucky and actually find a Threshold by Studio McGee faux floral or plant arrangement at your local thrift shop. So for example, I found this olive bush that was originally I believe $50 and I just paid $4 for it at the Goodwill. And while finding these pieces are really great, I still think it's better almost to find just some neutral ceramics like your neutral planters, your crocs, your canisters, because those pieces can be more multifunctional in your space. For example, I came across this neutral crock at the Goodwill bins for less than a dollar, and I'm gonna go the foliage route for this example, but let's say in a few months from now, I want to switch it up and maybe use it to hold some utensils, or maybe I wanna use it for some storage in my bathroom. Having neutral ceramic pieces like this that can be kind of shifted all throughout your space depending on your needs at that time are fantastic, especially if you are short on storage. Also in this category, when we're talking about different ceramics, McGee & Co specifically uses a lot lot of artisanal pieces, handmade pieces. So when I was at the Goodwill, I came across this planter here that was made in a ceramics class. It has this beautiful glaze on it. And if you look really closely, you can kind of see there's like hints of brown in there. And it also has this kind of ripped quality that you'll see quite often in McGee and & Co and Studio McGee decor. So I took a previous fern from that line. And then I also found this really beautiful fern that each stem had wires in it, which is really nice. So you can shape it exactly how you want it. And I just combined the two together to get this really full effect. The only thing was there was a couple chips coming out of the planter. So I just shaded those in with a Sharpie pen. And this is the end result. This ultimately cost me less than $5. And I think it looks really high end on a budget. When you're decorating your space, an area that can get really expensive is lighting. And you guys have seen me do so many different iterations of a dupe for Studio Miggy lamps, especially floor lamps that can really get expensive. But for today, I wanted to talk about some ceiling light fixtures and pendant lighting and things like that. So at my local thrift shop, the Hartville Thrift Shop, I found this actually Threshold by Studio McGee um, pendant dome light that was originally $140 and I just paid $20 for it, but it was missing the cap part that would be attached to the ceiling, which was fine because in my office where this dome pendant is gonna be going, I don't have a socket kind of available for some hardwire lighting. So I'm just going to go the chargeable light route. So we'll get into that in a little bit, but the first thing I needed to do was alter the color to really match the rest of the gold tone going on in the rest of my office, which is more of a patinaed brass. So I'm going to cut the electricity because I won't be needing it. And then I'm just going to start by spray painting the inside with about four different types of spray paint that I will link in the description box below. And I just kept checking to make sure that it was going to be as close as possible to the tone that I needed in order for it to match the rest of my office. Once I was able to get the color right, I just needed to figure out how to hang it. So I went on Amazon and I ordered this chain here as well as a cap in a green bronze color so that way it matched the overall light fixture as well. With two screws I just added this cap to the ceiling here so it looks like it's hardwired but it's not and then just attached the chain to the pendant light. For the actual lighting I ordered these light bulbs off of Amazon that are rechargeable and come with a remote so I can very easily turn this pendant light on and off as I need to and I'm so happy with the way this project came out. I think it looks very high-end on a budget. Another material you will see in the lighting department from the Threshold by Studio McGee line and also McGee & Co are wovens. And you can definitely find a million and one baskets at the thrift store, but the key takeaway here is the shape. So when I found this one, it kind of just tapers. It almost looks like it should have been a lampshade or a pendant light, but it was just a basket. I also really loved that it had that scalloped detail that I think Studio McGee uses quite a bit. So 
taking my scissors, I'm just going to remove this center section here so that way I will be able to attach it to a pendant light kit that I ordered on Amazon. Also something I can link down for you guys, but that way it can just add a little bit of playfulness to my daughter's space. However, when I tried connecting both of the pieces together, it wasn't fitting as seamlessly as I wanted them to fit. So I just decided to add some E6000 to the top rim here. So then that way everything was really well secured. And this was the end result for just about $15. I think this makes such a playful moment in my daughter's space. Moving right along into textiles. So this is where things can get a little complicated, honestly, because Shay McGee and her team, they do a really good job of mixing pattern, mixing materials. Everything is different, but it all still feels like it goes together, which can be really challenging. So when it comes to pillows, here is my best advice, because oftentimes at the thrift store, you will find just kind of one of a kind pillows. So if you're trying to get pillows for a specific chair or a specific sofa, love seat, whatever it is, bring a swatch of that fabric if you can with you to the thrift store. So that way you know what you're trying to match it to and you can kind of compare how it will look. And then also go on the website and see what you're naturally gravitated towards. So I love that faux fur ball pillow, but it is sold out and I also don't want to spend $78. Some of you may remember when I duped the pumpkin pillow from Pottery Barn over the fall season and I could just choose to leave it, put it out next year, or I could choose to repurpose it. So that is the route that I went because I don't want things just collecting dust in my basement if I have an idea or a better use for them today. I took some white thread and tied a knot at the end and we are going to do a running stitch which is basically just threading the needle in and out of the fabric that you are working with so then that way you'll be able to kind of cinch the fabric so it will be nice and tight at the top and at the bottom. After cinching the fabric together so that there's no opening, I'm going to tie a really tight double knot and just to make sure that it's going to fit appropriately, I'm then going to flip the fabric inside out and then just sew kind of what would be then the back side by starting at the bottom and sewing all along that side about three fourths of the way up and then flipping the fabric right side out, sticking the pillow inside, pushing it down as much as I can. And because it is a down pillow, it was a lot easier to do that. And then I'm going to kind of fold the fabric onto itself, make another running stitch at the top until it is nice and tight like the bottom is. And this is the end result. This project ended up only costing me a few dollars. I have so much of this faux fur fabric left over. So if you guys have any ideas on what I could use it for, leave me a comment down below. To add some visual interest, I wanted to find a blanket that had some pattern. So I ended up finding this rust blanket and luckily enough, it was a yellow tag, which meant that this blanket only cost about $2 and 50 cents. And I think it adds a lot of visual interest to this corner. But if you don't get lucky in your fabric section, make sure you're checking kind of all the areas areas that carry textiles. So your blankets, your dish towels, all of that can carry a lot of really great quality fabric that you can repurpose into essentially whatever you want. The last kind of textile piece I wanted to share with you was this rug that is from Threshold that was originally tagged for $40, but then I used my coupon that had 35% off, brought the overall cost of this wool rug down to just $26, which is an insane price point, And I think it adds a lot of visual interest into my office. Next up, let's talk about the sneakiest of the home decor expenses in my eyes is all of the decorative accents. So like your trays and your bowls, your bookends, and all of these little pieces that add up over time. So I like to go to the thrift store first to see what I can find that is similar to McGee & Co or Studio McGee. So I found this glass cube here that was $5. I could use it as a bookend or I could just use it in a more sculptural way. Studio McGee is really known for mixing materials. So in addition to glass, another material to really incorporate is wood pieces. So I actually got both of these risers as a Christmas gift and I love them. I think they're beautiful, but I wanted to see what I could create using some pieces I found at the Goodwill bins. So I found two of these plaques here as well as I've just been collecting like wooden beads over time. Every time I'm at the bins, I just add it to this bag. The first thing I did was I just sanded the top down really well, just so it was nice and smooth, so it could take an application of stain or paint. So taking four of the biggest size that I have, I wish I had bigger, but this was just the biggest size that I had, and then I just actually spray painted it taupe first, and then I added some antiquing wax on top, just so that way you see the grain, but the undertone color isn't super orange or yellow because it just really clashes with my floors. 
Once the antiquing wax had dried, I just added a sealer over top and this is how it turned out. If you love a Studio McGee or McGee & Co look, a lot of what metal she uses is patinaed brass and things that look aged and weathered because she does incorporate a healthy dose of vintage in her design style. So I found this piece here for just $1.50. If you're ever curious if something is actually brass, brass is just a combination of copper and zinc and both of those are not magnetic. So any magnet shouldn't stick to anything that is actually brass. When it comes to styling your shelves, we've kind of touched on this a little bit. One thing that I've done in the more recent years is adding sculptures. And I really think that this is a way to kind of help break up some really uniform shapes and just give it a lot more visual interest. And this is definitely something you can find at the thrift store. Last but not least, we're just going to very quickly touch on some spring decor as this was her last drop. And one thing that I will recommend to you guys is although none of us are really decorating for spring right now, keep your eyes out at the thrift store for kind of more expected spring decor. So I found three of these garlands. Rather than use them as a garland, I decided to combine all three and just turn them into a wreath. I also found these scrap foliage pieces that were from like a really nice foliage branch, added them to the wreath as well. And I'm still on the lookout. I hope to find in the next couple months some really beautiful ribbon to add to this wreath. But I think that it's nice when I go into my spring boxes that everything is just kind of done and ready to go and ready to be put up. Another piece I really loved was this marble bunny but you can oftentimes find bunnies that look just like that at the thrift store and just try a cement or a faux marble technique to get it to look exactly how you want it to. And that about wraps it up for today, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know down in the comments which hack or find was your favorite this week, and I will see you guys next Sunday. Bye for now.